Hey everyone, Donnie here with GameLeap.com. Uh, I'm back from TI, and that means we get back to doing video content. Uh, if you haven't already, go ahead and check out the giveaway that we're doing on the YouTube channel. Um, I will link the video right here. It's uh, for the really sick Dark Artistry Invoker set, and we're also giving away 10 free subs to GameLeap. Um, and so if you haven't already checked out that video, uh, go ahead and hit the link and you can potentially win something pretty cool. Um, so today's video, what I wanted to cover was communication. I've had a lot of responses of people asking how to communicate better uh, or interact with your team better or teamwork or how to not tilt when you're communicating. Uh, various things like that, and so I thought I would make a video which is the five ways to reduce tilt and communicate better with your team. Uh, and this is stuff that I've learned through, you know, playing Dota, uh, being on teams at high level sports competitions, coaching people, etc. And it's just sort of uh, a little overview of things that you can implement right now that will make your communication style significantly more effective when you're playing games with people that you don't know. And that's one thing that I think a lot of people don't understand is that when you're playing a game, everybody tries to emulate the pros and that includes when they make calls. And so people just demand, you know, go to Roshan, go take this tower. But the reason that that works in the pro scene is that people have developed a trust of their captain or shot caller over the course of weeks and months and even years of practice with them. And when you're playing a game of Dota and you're with for random people, they don't know you. They don't. They have no reason to trust you. So, uh, you know, you gotta communicate differently in that situation. So let's get into it. Step number one, ask, don't demand. This is exactly what I was just saying. If you ask people, can we take tier one? Can we get Roshan now? Can somebody buy a pipe? Or can somebody buy a Crimson Guard? That sounds a lot easier for people to respond to than if you just say, hey you, buy Crimson Guard. Hey you, go take that tower. You know, if I think about it and a friend of mine or even my parents demanded something of me, I am immediately turned off by that. I don't wanna to listen to them. I don't wanna do what they're saying because that tone of voice really, it's, it's not great to hear, especially from somebody you don't know. You know, some random person came up on the street and was like, hey, go over there. Would you do it? Probably not. So if you ask somebody, you can still call a shot. You can still say, take tier one. But if you say it in the way of, can we take tier one? It allows everybody else to think about it for a second and then make that call themselves. And if you do that, you can still direct how the game goes without being the director in their eyes, which allows you to, um, you know, be listened to uh, sort of like subconsciously almost. So that's step number one. Number two is to replace the word you or you guys with we. Remember, it's a team game. We're all in this together. Uh, even if you're fighting with your team or your team is fighting amongst each other, you're still all working towards the same goal of winning that game. So instead of saying something like, you guys need to stop dying, say we need to stop dying because that includes yourself in the criticism or the comment that you're making and it makes it again seem like you're not the director because again, people don't trust you when they first meet you, it's just human nature. So if you include yourself in all these statements, we need to go do this, we need to do this, we need to get wards on the map instead of saying, you need to go ward, say, we need to ward, let's go ward together. That will allow your team to, uh, you know, look at you as part of it, which innately will make them more likely to listen to you. Um, so yeah, replace you with we, and you'll get better results as well. Number three, uh, if your team is fighting amongst each other, don't jump into the middle of the conversation instead inject logic into it. So let's say that you are, you know, have, you have a small lead, your mid is like four and out, it's going pretty well, and then he dies. 
and immediately people start calling GG, game's over. Mid sucks, feeding a streak, you know? That happens all the time in pubs. And it, it frankly just doesn't make any sense. You know, it's not logical. You have the lead, somebody died once, don't let it happen again, you probably are gonna win. But instead people get all upset. Um, and so it's your job as the rational person to inject logic into the situation by saying, here's the plan. This is what we need to do to win. And if you can, you know, be very specific, be like, okay, uh, you know, TP back mid, I'm gonna sit in the trees behind the tower and counter gank because they're gonna probably try and go for you again. And if somebody could please come down and give us a sentry ward, or you know, stand here, or also be ready to counter gank. If you're really specific with the plan, it again make people start thinking about that, and it'll pull them out of the mindset of the illogic anger, and into the realm of logically figuring out the game and how to win it again. So, inject logic into the situation. It'll pull people out of their egotistical or whatever tilted state they may be in and make them think about how to win the game again, which is really important. Number four, avoid playing the game when you have other responsibilities or you're in a time crunch. Um, I've done this from time to time because I'm a very busy person and I'll see like a 45 minute window that I can fit a game into and I'll be like, all right, I'm gonna play a game of Dota because it's the only chance I have to play today. Uh, and so I will, you know, most games are probably 30 to 40 minutes. So, you know, I've, I've got room. I can play this game. And the thing is, you never know going into a game what's going to happen. You never know whether they're going to have great high ground defense randomly or your team is going to push their advantage too early and then you're going to be behind. You know, you never really know how the game's going to turn out. So if you start playing with this mindset of I got to get this game done now because I have to be somewhere or something else has to get done, you're gonna start playing the game in this really weird kind of overly aggressive and it's really, it's a tilted way. Uh, and then all of your teammates who make mistakes or do anything to potentially delay the game, even if they're like farming, which they should be doing to get their next item, you're gonna be like, no, stop farming. Come on, we gotta go. We gotta go, we gotta end this game now. And in that sense, you become uh, the problem, you become the issue with the teamwork because you're trying to force the issue when it doesn't need to be there. So if you have something else to get done, do that. Don't play Dota in small windows of time where you think you can fit a game in. If, if there's any possibility that you're gonna need to leave soon, then just don't play a game. You know, watch a video instead. Go watch some of our other videos or, or whatever. Just, uh, just don't queue because you're gonna ruin the game for yourself and everybody else. Um, number five, and this one is a little bit different, but it's something that I've started thinking about and doing on occasion, and it's really opened my eyes. And that wow. is to watch games, specifically ones that you lose, from the perspective of your team in a role that's not yours, or also watching it from the other team perspective. So maybe even watch the same replay twice. You lose a game, it's very easy to think, all right, you know, my support was 0 and 15, so obviously we lost. But instead, I'm sure there was probably a lot of reasons why he was 0 and 15, and it wasn't just because he was playing poorly. So if you actually watch the game from his perspective, or maybe another support on your team, let's say you're playing carry, or conversely, if you're playing support and you blame your carry for the loss, watch the game from the carry or the mids perspective and see if, you know, were the supports out of position. Because if you can do that, if you can gain the perspective of another person, you might even get partway, part of the way into the replay and think, man, my support is really bad. And then you're like, oh, that support is me. Okay, so here's the stuff that I can improve on. And then, you know, watching the game from the perspective of your enemies, you can be like, all right, well, this person was out of position all the time. So that's 
you know, that's a that's a big key factor is your position. And if you're always showing up on their mini map and, and or they see you warding or whatever, you can gain so much perspective by watching the game from not your own point of view. And that should also help cultivate a feeling of empathy with other people if you understand all the roles and how they interact together and you don't always just think of yourself as this one core singular player um, who is responsible for everything happening in the game. If you can see the game from so many different perspectives, then when something does go wrong in the game, it becomes much easier to digest that experience and think about, okay, the support contributed in this way and this character contributed in this way and I had this responsibility which I didn't do and together you can see that the responsibility is a share for a win. It's shared when you lose, it's shared when you win, and that's always going to be the case in a game of Dota where it's five on five. So that's number five. Those are the five ways that you can immediately improve your communication and reduce tilt with you and your teammates in the game of Dota. Um, stay tuned for more videos. We're going to re be releasing a lot more content on a regular basis. And I hope to see you all soon in the comment section below. Let us know what we're doing right or wrong. Uh, game on and peace, everybody.